Now, it is not a severe weather event, nor is it something that will be making the evening news as breaking or severe and causing damage, but it is definitely a controlling factor in the weather across Eastern Asia and the Western Pacific. In today's episode of Westpac Weather 101, we will be breaking down the Northeast and Southwest monsoon. Now, before I get into what causes the monsoon and what you can expect when it does occur, let's first talk about that word monsoon. Because despite what you have seen in the movies and popular opinion, monsoon does not mean heavy rainfall. It actually means winds or a seasonal reversal of winds. So, for example, if you live in an area where half the year the winds are blowing from west to east, but the other half the year they're moving from east to west, you live in a monsoonal climate. Now in Eastern Asia and the Western Pacific, the weather really revolves around two types of the monsoon. You have the northeast monsoon and the southwest monsoon, both named such because of the direction the wind goes. During the summer months, we have the winds coming from the southwest, thus the southwest monsoon across much of the tropics. And then in the winter months, the northeasterly winds come across the tropics in the northeast monsoon. Let's start off talking about the winter months and specifically starting around the month of January where the northeast monsoon is already in full swing and basically what you have going on is the cold Siberian high is continuing to dominate much of eastern China and eastern portions of Russia. Now this cold core high is dependent on the cold air that is settled across much of this region. Now this is a general rule of thumb, it does change throughout the winter months based on low pressure areas that migrate across the region. But overall, we have the winds go clockwise around this high pressure area. As they extend down over parts of Japan and eventually into the East China Sea and then extending down into the tropics, what you have is strong northerly winds going to northeast, even across much of the Philippines throughout the winter months. As far as the weather is concerned here, you often see light rainfall extend across northeastern portions of Luzon, even over towards parts of Vietnam. The other thing with the northeast monsoon is that it brings in abundance of vertical wind shear and this usually stifles any tropical cyclone development. If you do see tropical systems form in the winter months or during the height of the northeast monsoon, they often stay farther down towards the south into parts of Mindanao or in southern Visayas out of the grasp of the monsoonal winds, which would well, tear it apart due to high vertical wind shear. Now, the northeast monsoon typically lasts until springtime when you start to see the northern hemisphere warm up. That cold Siberian high, as I noted, is basically revolved around that cold air that extends over much of eastern Russia starts to warm up. The Siberian high begins to weaken and the Westpac high starts to move in from the east. As this happens, we get an elongated area of low pressure set up right in the middle of that, and that's what we call this rainy season front, or sometimes known as the plum rain. And along this, even stronger areas of low pressure may develop every three to four days, bringing heavy rainfall, sometimes can be serious across parts of eastern China and even over towards Japan throughout the spring months. This gradually migrates towards the north though, basically starting down towards southern China into mid to late May, and then eventually makes its way all the way off towards eastern Russia as we head into July. Now there is one more thing I do want to note that often occurs in the spring months. As the northeast monsoon starts to weaken and we start to see the southwest monsoon kick in, but the intertropical convergence zone, this area that revolves around the equator and it migrates north during the summer and south during the winter in the northern hemisphere, if this is not quite over the Philippines just yet, that basically leaves the Philippines with light easterly winds and sunny skies. That is why often in the months of March, April, and May, you actually see the warmest temperatures across the Philippines, despite it not being quite into the peak of summer just yet. Now, as the West Pack High continues to build in from the west, the southwest monsoon becomes more dominant as far as a factor in the tropics, and even causes problems at times as far as rainfall is concerned, especially when you get an area of low pressure typically a tropical system, setting up in the Philippine Sea just off the eastern seaboards of the Philippines. When this happens, you often see an enhancement of the monsoon, bringing heavy rainfall across much of the Philippines. And even into Manila, several years ago, we actually seen one system 
caused extensive flooding in the capital of the Philippines. Now, this storm did not make landfall, but it enhanced the southwest monsoon. And when that happened, we seen this very significant flooding. And this will typically be the dominant weather factor throughout the summer months. And as we head into September and October, the West Pack High will eventually start to retreat back there towards the east. The Siberian High slowly builds in. And then we start to see little bubble highs break off of the Siberian High. During the fall, the dominant weather factor for much of Japan into the East China Sea, and those of you into Okinawa know this quite well, is cold surges. As we get low pressure areas track across the region, we start to see the winds pour in from the north. And when this happens, you get cold, dense air interacting with warm, tropical air, and this sets up a very tight pressure gradient. Sometimes winds can be gusting well over tropical storm strength when this happens. Seas will be upwards of 10 to 15 feet, and you're going to be seeing, well, even at times, very dangerous thunderstorms flare up along this frontal boundary. And also, even at times, especially in the strongest cold surges, you can see them dive all the way down into the tropics, into parts of the Philippines. Temperatures will dive into the mid to low teens, especially into northern Luzon. Then as we head into the winter months, we start to see this cycle repeat all over again. The Siberian high begins to strengthen as the northern hemisphere winter becomes much colder. The heat low that we've seen set up during the summer completely vanishes, so the southwesterly winds taper off, and we start to see those northeasterly winds set up yet again. Now you may think this is just the winds as far as the monsoon is concerned, but for example, it does play a key role even in the tropics. Throughout the fall months, as I mentioned, we have these cold surges which often surge down deep into the tropics at times. Tropical systems do not like this as they carry cool dry air and high amounts of vertical wind shear. So when you see them come out of eastern portions of China and extend across Japan, especially in late tropical season, the West Pack High is retreated back towards the east, so tropical storms often will run up towards Japan. When you have a tropical system confronted with a cold surge, the cold surge will always win. Two things will likely happen. It will tear it apart due to the high amounts of vertical wind shear and dry air, or it will just push it off towards the northeast in a high velocity recurving scenario. But overall, this is just some of the fundamental rules behind the northeast and southwest monsoon. If you want to know more, please check out our website on our northeast and southwest monsoonal page. Also, you can ask us here in the comment box down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're at it and even hit the like button. Also, follow us on Facebook at Western Pacific Weather. Any questions you may have there and also weather updates and typhoons and general weather scenarios across the Western Pacific are often posted there daily. All right, guys, thanks again for watching. And as always, stay safe out there.